Hi again. My name is Rebel and I'm the Rebel Reseller. And today I'm going to be doing the second half of my Watt Solds, which was for last weekend, which was November 26th through the 28th. Let me move my board. All's good in eBay land as far as my sales are going. Um, tis the season for returns already, though. So I'll talk about one of them that is kind of sad. But, you know, it is what it is. I think I had like three a week and a half ago. And one hasn't even shipped yet. So I think it gets closed out in the next few days. And then I woke up this morning to two more. And somebody who used a freight forwarder to have something shipped back in September. And now is claiming that it's damaged. Just FYI, if you sell something and it goes to a freight forwarder, which is a company that a lot of international buyers like to use, um, you, you ship it to them and our responsibility is done at that point. Um, they lose all buyer protections if they use a freight forwarder. So, because we don't know what happens there. They may repack stuff to condense them into smaller bundles before they ship them off to wherever it's going. So two months ago, over two months ago, you know, I shipped something. And today I realized when he started sending me messages, this item is damaged. Um, at first I thought it was just outside of my return window. And then I realized he used a freight forwarder. And you can usually tell them in addresses, there'll be a code in the address. Um, a lot of them come out of uh, Delaware, if it's the East Coast, and if it's the West Coast, I see a lot of them going out of Oregon. So I've sent several messages saying, I'm sorry you used a freight forwarder. Um, I don't know if they were the ones that damaged your item, plus it's out of my return frame, and I'm not sure how this is going to go. But I'm sure eBay has my back, no matter what, because it is a freight forwarder. So don't fall for that. Don't let them just say, oh, it's damaged, and you just give them a refund without a return. And they're never going to return this because they would have to pay international shipping back to the freight forwarding company. And then from there, you know, we would be responsible, like in an INAD, to um, pay the return from there. But it is what it is. It's going to happen so, you know, it's just what they say, cost of doing business as far as returns in general. But let's go ahead and get into what I sold. I only have eBay and Facebook. I have sold three more things on Etsy, so I'm up to a total of five. One of them was a $100 sale, so that's very nice. Um, Mercari slow. Facebook is doing excellent. And Bonanza nothing. I don't get very much on there anyway. Sometimes, you know, two or three a month. So, you know, it is what it is there also. All right. First item is a Baby Gap baby blanket. Pretty sure I picked it up at a consignment sale, so I probably paid two or three dollars for it. And it sold for best offer of fifteen dollars. I love to pick up baby blankets, vintage, newer, it doesn't matter. Um, usually there's going to be somebody who's needing a replacement and, you know, they sell quite quickly for me and for decent um, money. This is another vintage Tupperware item I picked up at an estate sale. Again, probably paid one or two dollars for it. It is a Lazy Susan with the red handle. Um, definitely keep your eye out for handles. I'm getting ready to list a bunch more that I picked up um, because the, they break or they get lost and people are always looking for replacements. This one did have the handle and I sold it for $17.95. This is a Hot Wheels Christmas tree ornament. I think I bought this at Finders Keepers that first weekend, so I paid a dollar for it. I love to pick up Christmas ornaments. It doesn't matter whether um, they're at yard sales, estate sales, 
wherever. I just like picking them up because at the least you get six to ten dollars for them if they're, you know, the Radcos or anything like that. Of course, you're going to get more for. But he did sell for seven dollars and fifteen cents. This is Fisher Price Loving Family Dollhouse that I picked up from this summer. I bought several lots of them and I divided them up into lots. This was the baby with a seat and the little front for the seat and a picnic blanket. And I sold it for $18.25 best offer. These are from the Oneida set that I picked up at an estate sale. I wanna say, I don't remember. I think I paid $10 for the whole set. And I divided everything up into lots of four place settings. So this was for the teaspoons and they sold for $24.95. Definitely check all your silverware and flatware, especially at NIDA. I've had very good luck with them. This is a Plaz Marlowe Beagle dog plush from 1988. Probably got it at the bins or one of my yard sales. Again, if you're new to my channel, I buy a lot of plush, usually a dollar or less um, unless it's at thrift stores and estate sales. And then I may pay a little bit more for the convenience of buying a bunch consignment sales. Um, I did sell him though for $15.25. I don't do free shipping. So in conjunction to this, the buyer also paid shipping. This is a petting zoo rabbit. It was one of those that it's been listed a long time. And all of a sudden, as soon as I did this great relist of November. Um, it started coming up on my make offers and it then did sell for $8.96. This Robert picked, I think, up at an estate sale very recently. I want to say he paid a dollar for it. It was a sealed game and I sold it for $12.25. This is Kids of America. It is a Penguin stocking. I love to pick up all of these type. Dandy puts out a bunch. Kids of America. Um, just there's lots of brands. I grab them. Like I've always said before, I sell Christmas all year round. But of course, right now I'm selling a whole lot of stockings. And it sold for $17.95. This I picked up at an estate sale. I want to say it was one of those fill fill a basket or um, half price. I want to say I paid 50 cents or a dollar for it. It's from Kmart. It was a cloth, um, tablecloth, and um, it sold for best offer of $18. This is a CPK doll from 2008. This is the one that has the, the rubbery plastic face and then a cloth body. Um, I think they were called my first dolls or something like that. I did sell it for best offer of $10. This is a nylon Santa um, plush. I think it's supposed to hang on the wall because it does make sounds um, like ho, ho, ho and Merry Christmas and stuff like that. I think it was um, motion activated, but he did sell for best offer of $14. I picked up a bunch of sports related um, ornaments at an estate sale. I want to say I got it on half price day and they were like 50 cents each. Um, I don't think I have any left, but this was for Penn State and it sold for um, best offer of $8.49. This is from Applause. It is Le Petit Francois. It's a frog plush from 1988 and he sold for $26.95. I love applause. It's just very good quality. Applause, Dakin, um, are some of my favorite for the vintage plush. This is Animal Adventure. Just a pink dog. Probably came out for Valentine's Day or Mother's Day 2018. And it sold for $8.96. This is from my online estate sale. This was Tony's Pizza was a little miniature plush, six inches, and it sold for $7.15. I need to go back and tabulate how much we've made on that. I spent 500 and some dollars 
on probably enough, probably, we want to estimate it was 1,200 to 1,500 items. Um, and I've sold quite a bit. Now, I still have a whole lot listed, and I have a whole lot that I haven't listed yet. Um, it's just one of those estate sales that just keeps on giving, though. So, um, I'm going to do, maybe the next time I do a haul, I'll go ahead and add up what I've made so far. I'm trying to keep a tally of everything, but every once in a while, I got to go back and look and make sure. I have a code in my custom SKU that tells me exactly which items came from that estate sale. I've talked about these several times. I see these at yard sales all the time. They are Rodney Reindeer from Hallmark. There's a series of, I want to say four or five of them. Randy, Ramona, I can't remember the other girl's name, but the highly collectible ones, their body is four and a half inches long. They do come larger, but I do really well with these and I pick them up very often. But Rodney did sell for $8.96. This is Russ Plush. It was a vintage plush named Amber, five and a half inches tall. I want to say this went global shipping and he sold for $11.66. This is Nat and Jules. It's an Owl Lovey plush. I get, sometimes my brain says, where did you pick that up? I just, I don't remember. You guys know I buy so much. But again, it was probably a dollar or less. And he sold for $13.45. This is Spark Create Imagine. It is a prayer bear. There's a whole series of these. Hug Fun put some out. And I think Dandy put some out. But you squeeze their little hand and they say a prayer in a child's voice. I buy them anytime I can, especially if they're working. I think they have the internal batteries, so just make sure you squeeze. And if they're working and they're clean, um, I usually do really well with them. Um, this one did still have its tag. I think this came from that thrift store um, that I filled a bag of a whole bunch of Spark Create Imagine plush for $10. But this prayer bear sold for $16.16. .16. This is Russ Pucker's pig, pink pig. He's nine inches tall and he sold for $19.95. A lot of the Russ that are not bears tend to do much better for me than the bears, but I buy them all because I just love that brand. Just an example of some of the clothing items we've sold. This is a pair of Columbia Omni Shade men's pants. Probably paid $2 for them at a yard sale, and they sold for $22.21. I've had a viewer ask um, about the, the board right here. So I'm going to do a video. Now that we've kind of got our system down, because clothes are new to us, um, but I'll do a short video on how we use this um, board behind me. Um, believe me, it's a lifesaver as far as your back and just the ease of doing clothes flat lay. This is from my online estate sale. I do really well with Opus. It's like one at one point I sell a whole bunch of Opus and then I list a whole bunch and they sit for a while and then they all sell. It must be just some kind of, you know, in the stars on whether he's um, going to sit for a while or sell. I've, I've sold several of them in the last few weeks. And Obus sold for $8.96. I pick up snapback hats when I find them and they're cheap. Um, but I, they're just not big sellers for me. Maybe, I, you know, every once in a while I'll find that one that, you know, I can sell for $60 or $70 or $80. But for the most part, they sit. I've got quite a few listed. And every once in a while I'll sell one. This one sold for $13.45. This plush is from Applause. It is Porky and Bess kissing Valentine pigs. Um, they had the little something that made their nose the hook and loop, hook and fastener right here. And they did attach there. I had, I think at some point, two of them. And this is the last one. And it sold for $13.45. 
I hope when people are watching this, I've gotten a couple of comments where people have said um, they were watching a video and saw me sell something or talk about something and then they went to the thrift store or a yard sale and they found something like what I had talked about. So I'm hoping the more you watch of these, you know, it'll just applause, you know, well, the next time you see a really cute applause plush, plush you might go ahead and pick it up. But, you know, that's, that's my main hope in all of this, that it just kind of rings a bell with you and at least check the comps. I picked up a whole bunch of vintage glassware somewhere. I think I bought a lot for something specific, but these were in there. They were Welsh's Tom and Jerry glasses. I had several from different series, but they were all the Welsh that the jellies and jams used to come in. Just an example, I, you see these a lot at yard sales, so don't just pass them by because a lot of times you can get them, you know, 10 for a dollar or a quarter each. Not a big money maker, but you know, $6.26 for probably something that I had pennies in. So I say this all the time, it all adds up in the end for me personally. <laughs> this. I bought this for me at a yard sale for $20. It was a medium, and I should have known better. It was just too big and bulky. So, you know, I wore it one time last year, and then it's just hung over on a coat rack. And then earlier this year, I found a small North Face jacket that's the layered type, and just, I love it, love it. So I was walking down the steps the other day, and I thought, well, that Carhartt jacket just needs to go. And I, you know, processed it, got it listed, it sold within days. I paid $20 for this Carhartt jacket, and I sold it for $71.71. So basically, it paid for itself, plus the jacket, the North Face jacket that I picked up that was $25. So I like when that happens because basically, you know, the North Face jacket's free. Another example, Toys R Us. Um, I buy them all the time. This one was from the Soft Classic series, just a little Spaniel dog. Again, I've talked about, I always buy specific breeds of dogs if I can recognize them. The Beagles, the Rottweilers, Labradors, um, Chihuahuas, all of them, there are collectors for them. Um, but this um, Spaniel sold for $13.45. My stomach's growling. I have sold probably at least 10 of these knit stockings. I believe they're vintage. I pick them up all year long and usually list them $7.95, $9.95 just depending on the design and the, the quality. Um, and I pay pennies for them. And this is just another example. I sold it for $7.15. I think, yeah, I had two of these and I just shipped this one out. But definitely, all de don't pass up the Christmas stuff, even in June and July and August. Definitely look through them and look for the vintage. Jimmy. I've talked about Jimmy before. Um, these are the animated plush that's usually musical and they move. This was a reindeer plush that did some kind of rapping Santa song. What's funny is it was listed for a while and Jimmy doesn't usually stay in my store very long. And I sold him for $62.95. These bowls Robert picked up, I want to say he only paid a couple of bucks for them. Um, there were six of these dessert bowls, and there were quite a few cereal bowls. They were Sango Nova Brown was what was on the back of the bowl. I sold all six of these to one buyer for $32.16. This is Fiesta Snowman. Again, it's another one of those things I picked them up and usually they sell this time of year. I've shipped out a whole bunch of snowmen, but he sold for $10.95. This is Kelly Toy Lamb Plush, 2018, so not very old, but sold for $17.95. And to me, it just kind of looked a little chintzy, 
but comps told me go ahead and list it up there and it sold relatively quickly. This is a buckle toy whale plush. I picked a couple of these up either at the bins or at a yard sale. I think this is the last one and it has these just right here on the bottom. Buckles. I guess it's to practice doing buckles but it sold for $11.66. This is my return. I think I sold, I forgot to write down how much it really sold for, but very close to the price you see here. Um, they sent me a picture this morning and the two green pieces there are showing major damage that definitely weren't there. Um, I've responded, I've sent them a message um, through the message center and through the return request because it wasn't auto approved um, if they want to um, have a partial refund instead of me paying to have all of this shipped back to me. Um, but I will because I know I can make my money still even with the return shipping um, just um, selling the, the tracks and the trains and the tots that are with this. But you know it is what it is returns a part of business. This is my big sale though. This is from Jurassic World. Pretty sure I picked this up at a consignment sale. Probably paid. I bought several bags of, oh yes, it was the one that I traveled an hour and a half to get to. Um, I bought several bags of dinosaurs that were $5, $8, and they had multiples in there. Um, this was the best one in there, and it did take the longest to sell because I went there this summer. But this is the Grab and Growl Endoraptor Dinosaur. It does make sounds, and it does light up. Um, I do include, usually, the new button batteries in these, but I do not install them. Just don't store toys with batteries in them. Um, it just, depending on, you know, where you're storing it and everything, it could you know, corrode or explode or whatever. So I always take the batteries out and on these types of toys, I buy the batteries on Amazon bulk and then I usually replace them with fresh new batteries, which I did for this. But he did sell for $89.96. Definitely do the comps on anything Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. I've done really well with them. All right, these next few are from Facebook Marketplace. I sold a lot, but this is just a sample of them. This is again for my dollhouse items. A lot of times I do split up some of the harder to find um, dolls. The moms and the dads come in multiple sets and sometimes they're the same exact one. Sometimes there's just you know variations in clothing, but some of the children are very unique to certain sets. This one was from 2004 and she sold for $12. These were, um, again, something been listed on eBay for a long time. Went ahead and put them over on Facebook and they sold for $7. They're just these cute little animals. I, I got them all at the bins at one time, just swooped up all of them, but they're from Bowley and they were from 2001. Just, I love to pick up a lot of the smalls. This is from Gons. It's Hayward. Again, I wasn't listing plush on Facebook Marketplace. I was pretty much keeping to the small toys and vintage stuff. But I've started putting some over there. And this one sold for $7. Beanie Boos. I tell you, I buy them and I list them. This one doesn't even have its ear tag, I don't believe. And it sold for $8 on Facebook Marketplace. There are still collectors. There are, I've still got a whole basket right here of some that I found on my shelf. I'm going to go ahead and get them listed and then get them cross-listed to Facebook. This is from Fisher Price Octonauts. I haven't found any in a while. There for a while I found quite a bit and I list them for the most part pieces unless I have a play set. But the characters I usually list each and like this one that did have some paint wear, um, I sold it for $9 on Facebook. These are puzzles that I picked up at Finders Keepers um, the first time we ever went there, which is the only time it's ever been 
worth our time. Sorry. But we spent like $260 there that day, and it was a dollar per item. So that's how much. But I bought a ton of puzzles and a ton of backpacks, um, which I'm slowly but surely getting through. But this sold on there for $18. This, I received a very sweet message from a father. He wanted to confirm that it worked um, because he'd had one of these for years and it was a favorite of his autistic sons during the holiday. And when they got it out this year, they realized it was no longer making music. So I double checked again, just to make sure, cause you just don't know when stuff's stored for a while, um, that it did work and um, he purchased it and we got it out for him and he's already sent me a message thanking me because his son is just thrilled that he has his favorite Christmas decoration back so that's why we do what we do right we got we have to find that that buyer who wants this item and, and is, is going to cherish it I know that sounds corny but I believe it I truly do believe it all right, I'm going to go ahead and get back to processing stuff. Um, it's been kind of busy here just with life, and I'm not getting as much stuff listed. But then again, you know, things are, you know, going to start winding down, I think, soon. I'm planning a sourcing trip again, hopefully the middle of this month. Um, we try to do this a couple times a year where we load up a trailer and we go and we hit bins and for days, just all day for three and four and five days. And then um, when the trailer gets as full as we can or we need to get home, then that's what we do. We start heading back home. But I'm planning um, hopefully the middle of December when, you know, pretty much people are going to be winding down for Christmas shopping. All right. Bye.